Good morning. This is week seven, our last and final week of Social Work 636. This week, the subject is on trauma-informed organizational approaches. So as you can see on the screen, we have our three objectives to describe the ways organizations may contribute to trauma among clients define trauma-informed organizations, and to describe model components of trauma-informed organizations, including the sanctuary model. So for this week, there are two articles, the sanctuary model of trauma-informed organizational change and the we're civil servants, the status of trauma-informed care in the community, and three chapters from the Brody and their book on evidence-based management, ethical dilemmas in management, and humanizing the organization. For this week, you have a couple of discussion posts required. So for your first discussion post, step one is to this is to watch the video implementing trauma-informed care in an organization jot down at least two principles that were discussed in the video and at least two examples of concrete steps the organization featured in order to implement a trauma-informed care practice step two then you're watching two additional videos and then step three, you're writing an initial post that includes all of the following using headings, which is always a good suggestion. What are two of the principles in, of trauma-informed care discussed in the video implementing trauma-informed care in an organization? What are two examples of concrete steps the, the featured organizations took to implement trauma-informed care, what practices pursued by an organization or program featured in the videos you watched in step two are consistent now with what you know about a trauma-informed or sanctuary model approach, what, in your opinion, could the organization do differently, and then thinking back to the shared case. This is the shared case of Anita, so you want to go um, to the link and go back to that share, shared case. How could trauma-informed care benefit Anita and her family? This is one that you are encouraged to respond to your peers, but you do not have to. So let's go down to the next activity. The next activity is, again, another discussion post requirement. And this one asks you to take pictures of the organization that was the focus of your program funding proposal or to, if you can't do that, then take a pictures of another setting. Pay particular attention to, to the aspects of space within that setting. So this is an internal picture. If a person will end up in one of your pictures, please ask their permission. So I would avoid taking um, pictures that have people in them. And take notes on why you took the photo so that you can go back and refer to those notes. So once you've taken the pictures, what does the setting look, feel, and smell like? This is... This helps in terms of being able to assess an organizational culture. What is the role and presence of nature in the setting, if any? What types of relationships are taking place in the setting and the physical space? What values do you think are communicating? Because remember, most of communication is nonverbal. And if you would change this setting, how would you do it? So respond at least to one of your peers, upload those photos so that your peers can respond and see what you're seeing as well. So to say a little bit about trauma, oh, one other thing I'd like to mention is to 
talk about doing the evaluation, please do the evaluation for the class. A lot of times students don't believe that evaluations matter, but since I have been the director of a MSW program and also was the assistant director there at Widener University, I can attest to the fact that student evaluations are taken very seriously. You are our constituent group and therefore we want to know what you feel about what's going on with the program. Not everything can we change because some of what we do is dictated by, much of what we do is dictated by the Council on Social Work Education, but what we can take into consideration, what we can change and what we can explain, we will do so based on the evaluation that you will provide. To say a little bit about the readings, one was specifically on the sanctuary model. And again, organizational culture can be assessed just like we assess working with our clients. And we can assess if our cultures are re-traumatizing not only our clients, but our staff as well. I don't know if it's myth or reality, but there is a statement out there that says most many people die of heart attacks on Monday morning on their way to jobs that they hate. So if that's the case, then we need to look at what's going on in our, in our organizations. And because many of the staff have also gone through trauma as well, we don't want to re-traumatize people when they come to work in an organization. So the sanctuary model asks us to look at seven principles that could connote the positives or negatives that are in an organization, but these principles will help us build to the positive. And one is to have a culture of nonviolence. So we're building and modeling safety skills and the commitment to higher goals, a culture of emotional intelligence, and this is how we manage our thoughts and feelings, a culture of social learning, helping to build cognitive skills in an environment that promotes conflict resolution and transformation, a culture of shared government governance so that we are creating and modeling skills of self-control, self-discipline, and administration of healthy, healthy authority. We want open communication, a culture of social responsibility, and to help people with growth and change so that our organizations do not remain stagnant. The readings in the book also talk about ethical dilemmas, and just like we have ethical dilemmas in clinical practice, we can have ethical dilemmas in organizations. And some of the reasons for those ethical dilemmas include areas of administrative discretion, how that's used or not used, corruption in organizations. These are all things, of course, we want to avoid. Nepotism or any kind of partiality. Pressures for conformity, do things as I say. When the administration does things and they're secretive or leaks get out before good information gets out. Public accountability. We are always accountable to our public and first and foremost to our clients. Policy, this, the book talks about policy conundrums, but often it is the lack of policy or unclear policy that causes disruptions in organizations. Pressure group influence or clicks, as we mentioned in a previous class session, and then we are responsible to the public. The public can scrutinize our organizations and how we react to that also can build trust or it can build mistrust. The chapter also talks about NASW core values and ethics. So social workers and organizations have to practice the values of service, social justice, dignity and worth of the person, importance of human relationships, integrity and competence. So social workers 
are responsible for practicing our core value and ethics. In many organizations, there are many different disciplines. And so there are many different values and, and ethical practices that can come into conflict. A good organization recognizes all those value differences and acts accordingly so that people can understand each other's values, belief systems, and just like practicing with clients with different values and belief systems in organizations, we need to be open to other um, professions, values, and, and ethnic gover um, ethical governing practices. However, as social workers, we can't compromise our values and ethics. And the code of ethics is our guiding principle. So if there are any questions, please email me. Because this is the last week of class, I would ask that you be timely in terms of turning in your assignments. Once the class is over, there is a very short window in order to get grades in. So I have a very, very short window to turn in final grades. Again, any questions, please let me know, and I look forward to reading all of your final assignments. This has been a pleasure, and I hope you've learned a lot from the class, and we'll go on to implement principles of what we term macro practice, but again, macro, micro, meso, all those things are fluid. They're not cut and dried. Um, one is this, one is this. They flow from one to the other. You have to have good clinical skills to good, be a good macro practitioner. And so all of this is important if we're going to be good social work practitioners. So thank you, and I look forward to reading all of your final assignments.